When you talk about Chainsaw Man, it's hard to not immediately think about the bad guys. The devils like the Darkness Devil or the Gun Devil, iconic devils that serve as the bad guys for the core of the story. And this is for a couple of reasons. One, because unfortunately, those are the characters that stick around, as they're both incredibly powerful and devils go through an infinite reincarnation cycle. But two, because the design of these characters is incredibly cool and their motivations are kind of up in the air. We can't help but be curious about these iconically evil characters. Characters. And honestly, I'm no different. I've done videos ranking and explaining the strongest devils in Chainsaw Man. I've done a video ranking and explaining just the strongest hybrids in Chainsaw Man. But I realized as I was focusing solely on these devils, I was ignoring one very important group of people. The Devil Hunters, the so-called good guys of the story, filled with as many, if not more, iconic characters than the Devil roster. And while admittedly there is a little bit of overlap here, I figured with Chainsaw Man Season 1 coming to a close relatively recently, there's no better time than now to talk about the strongest Devil Hunters ranked and explained. But before we get to ranking or explaining anything, guys, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And while you guys are at it, if you like hearing me talk about a myriad of different animes, go ahead and follow my brand new podcast, Utaku's Anonymous with Danny Mata, where we're breaking down everything that happens in anime on a weekly basis. Devil Hunters. Whether they be in public security, private security, Japan, China, the Soviet Union, they all come together in one unified cause, killing devils. It is inarguably the most dangerous job in the Chainsaw Man universe, a job where relatively regular humans have to come into combat against infinitely resurrecting devils. There is no end in sight, and it's kind of a losing fight. And yet some people fight for the cause. But considering the fact that being killed by a devil makes up for 70% of fatalities in the Chainsaw Man universe, you would hope at least a couple people stood up for it. And throughout the duration of Chainsaw Man, we have met a lot of different devil hunters. And while I originally wanted to do a top 10, there were so many devil hunters that we've met and so many that I love, I had to make it 12. So with no further ado, let's get into Devil Hunters Ranked and Explained. Coming in at our bottom spot, which is really no disrespect on this list because it is a top 12 devil hunters in the entirety of the Chainsaw Man universe list, we have Kobeni. Kobeni is kind of an enigma. In the first chapter of the manga, there was a popularity contest done. And in this popularity contest, Kobeni lost in popularity to her car. Mind you, this car was stolen by power and crashed. So Kobeni's destroyed car was more popular than her. I would say by now that narrative has completely changed as Kobeni appears to be one of the most popular characters in Chainsaw Man as a whole. And it's not because she's incredibly powerful or well-written, she's just kind of a walking meme. Everything from her insane physical ability to her mysterious contract with the devil has been memed up to a preposterous level. And because of this, even though she's a background character and tries to kill Denji at one point, she is massively beloved. And here's the thing, I'm not even just putting her on this list because she's massively beloved. Benny is the perfect example of a timid character who's held back by their timidness. In fact, this is exactly what Himeno said, that she was one of the most talented devil hunters she'd ever seen, but her timidness held her back. And we've seen this. Kobeni, while alone after Denji got cut in half by the Katana Man, was able to take on Katana Man in his human form and Akane. Mind you, even though Akane is just a regular human, her contract with the Snake Devil makes her an incredibly formidable foe, as her and Katana Man were basically able to take on Himeno and Aki simultaneously. And don't forget, Denji was there as well. She was able to take on Katana Man and Akane simultaneously because when it comes to speed and strength, amongst humans, she's almost unmatched. She was able to cut off Katana Man's arm with next to no effort. On top of that, she was able to dodge the tail of the snake devil and react to bullets that Katana Man was shooting at her. And even though she prefers to use a knife, she's also an incredibly accurate shot, being able to severely injure Katana Man with a gun. On top of that, her battle IQ is pretty high, using Denji as a meat shield, fully understanding that he's able to rejuvenate. So while Kobeni might be a little bit of a meme and be a nervous wreck, you better believe I want her in my corner. And if her devil contract is what the community thinks her devil contract is, then let's be real, she could go up to number one on this list. Coming in at number 11, we have Cosmo. Now, for those of you who are anime only, you don't know Cosmo. Cosmo appears in the International Assassin's Arc, an arc that revolves around a Chinese devil hunter known as Quan Shi. Quan Shi is a hybrid with the crossbow devil, but Quan Shi also has four girlfriends who are fiends. Now, we don't really know the power of three of those fiend girlfriends, but we do know the power of one of them, and that would be Cosmo. See, Cosmo as a fiend means that at one point she was a corpse, and a devil found her corpse and took over her body to become a fiend. However, the problem with Cosmo as a fiend is that her body was 
relatively destroyed when the devil found her body, which is why the iconic head she has as a fiend is actually just half of her brain hanging out of her skull. And because of this, fans speculated for a long time that she was the zombie fiend. Well, that and the fact that she can only say the word Halloween. But it was later revealed that Cosmo was not the zombie fiend, and Cosmo was in fact the Cosmos Fiend. And the Cosmos Fiend, or the Cosmos Devil, is the representation of the fear of the Cosmos. More specifically, the infiniteness of the Cosmos. And the infinite knowledge that lies in the Cosmos. But because of this, as the Cosmos Fiend, Cosmo has an incredibly powerful ability. Cosmo can send people into a sort of extra-dimensional space. And this extra-dimensional space is represented by a gigantic library. Once you're forced into this gigantic library, the entirety of the knowledge of the the universe is shoved into your brain. But because humans aren't equipped to know everything in the entirety of the universe, this just forces you to think about Halloween until you die. So for the rest of your very short, confusing, and painful life, the only thing that you can say, just like Cosmo, is Halloween. The only problem with Cosmo is that as a fiend, and therefore being in a weakened state, this also affects her. However, within the confines of this extra-dimensional space, Cosmo is able to talk regularly. And within the confines of this extra-dimensional space, Cosmo has infinite knowledge, complete omniscience. There is nothing in the universe she doesn't know. So while technically it may seem as though Cosmo is just some shambling zombie who can only see Halloween, inside of her head is all of the knowledge of the universe that she technically does have access to as long as she's within her extra-dimensional space. And considering the fact that all she needs to do is get her hands on you to enter you into this extra dimensional space which is basically a one shot kill yeah she's gonna be at number 11. coming up at number 10 is one of my favorite characters in chainsaw man and should be one of yours because coming up at number 10 we have another fiend on the list this time it's beam the shark fiend. Beam is one of the minor players in Tokyo Special Division 4. And in the anime, you've seen him already. He's the shark who can swim through walls and is obsessed with eating things. Beam is more or less Denji's best friend. Beam kind of idolizes Denji, as Beam is also a young, eccentric, and very naive individual. And therefore, Beam will always go along with Denji's plans, going so far as to make sure that Denji is always safe on those plans. But outside of just being an incredible and loving character, Beam is also very powerful. Being able to tank multiple shots from Bomb Girl, a hybrid much like like Denji of the Bomb Devil, who is one of the most powerful people in Chainsaw Man as a whole, he also technically has intangibility. A lot like Obito or Lamillion, Beam is able to make his body intangible, allowing him to swim through floors and walls and people, which gives him tons of options when fighting against somebody. On top of this, as a shark fiend, he has incredible scent, being able to deduce what kind of devil somebody might be simply based off their smell. And more than anything, his true piece de resistance is his devil transformation. As like with most fiends, he's able to temporarily transform into his devil form. His devil form being a shark. However, the shark has even greater biting force than he had as a fiend. And also Denji rides him like a horse. Let's keep this fiend train rolling because coming in at number nine, we have Power. See, Power is considered by many to be the best girl of the show. And I can't really argue with that. She is fantastic. Power is the blood fiend. And as the blood devil, Power claims that she was so powerful that other devils would run from her scent. However, as a fiend, unfortunately, she's taken a step back in terms of power. And as a fiend, she has all the standard fiend abilities. Regeneration through blood, infinite reincarnation cycle if they're killed, and boosted physical strength and speed. But Power goes beyond boosted strength and speed. As Power is able to wield massive weapons made out of blood with relative ease, being able to kill things like a bear or the sea cucumber devil in one swing. Not to mention that power moved faster than Katana Man could react to and hit him with an uppercut he couldn't dodge. And mind you, for a while there, Katana Man moved so fast that Denji couldn't react to it. But power's real ability comes from her ability to control her own blood. Power usually controls her own blood by creating weapons out of it. However, power is also able to control the blood of others. However, in order to do this, she has to be in direct contact with that person. And power could hypothetically do anything with his blood that she wanted to. With Akishi was able to stop him from bleeding out. And on top of that, Power is also able to mess with somebody's regenerative abilities if she mixes her blood into their blood, which kind of makes her a nightmare to go up against if she's fighting another devil. And Power, just like Beam, can also use devil transformation, where she's able to temporarily re-become the blood devil. And in this form, she can use things like Thousand Terra Blood Rain, where she creates thousands of blades out of individual blood droplets that she can use to throw an unwielding barrage of blades at an enemy. And this technique has been shown to be able to halt the progress of some of the strongest people in the Chainsaw Man universe. But enough about fiends, let's get to actual devils, because coming in at number eight, 
we have the Angel Devil. Angel, also known as the Angel Devil, is also a part of the Tokyo Special Division 4. An angel, contrary to popular belief, is not a fiend. You see in Chainsaw Man, the more humanoid a devil is, the more friendly they are towards humans. An angel, even though he does have an iconic head with his halo, like a fiend would, is very humanoid and is therefore very friendly towards humans and therefore willing to help fight against devils. And as a just straight up devil and not a fiend, the angel devil still has all of his original power, which means things like his physical ability and his regeneration are much greater than that of fiends. In fact, the angel devil is considered the second strongest member of Tokyo Special Division 4, but his laziness holds him back. The angel devil's true strength comes from his ability to absorb the lives of anybody he comes into contact with. And upon coming into contact with these people, he absorbs away their life force. Now that life force is kind of like a monetary system for the Angel Devil, as those years that the Angel Devil has accumulated can be used for combat down the line. You see, the Angel Devil can create lifespan weapons. Weapons created from these siphoned off lifespans. And he has four of these weapons we've seen. Five years, 10 years, 100 years, and a thousand years. However, even at the lowest level with five years, these weapons are insane. At five years, Angel manifests a sword from his halo. This weapon kills anybody sliced with it without leaving a mark. Now his 10 years weapon seems very similar to his five years weapon, but we're not entirely sure how it works because we never get to see it used. The 100 years weapon is very similar, also a sword that we don't really get to see the full effects of. But the 1000 years weapon is a spear, a spear that was strong enough to defeat the strongest devil in Chainsaw Man. And the angel devil really doesn't have to worry about using these years because simply by brushing hands with Aki, the angel devil estimates that he took two months of life from Aki, which which means in a matter of seconds, you can lose months of your life. A man on Twitter who was obsessed with femboys estimated that if you were to, you know, with Angel and you started in your 20s, you would get 15 minutes until you die. More than enough time for me, but what can I say? I'm efficient. On top of being able to make incredibly broken weapons and absorb people's life force, the Angel Devil has insane reflexes. Being able to react to bullets and use his wings to shield himself from them, meaning his wings are strong enough to block bullets. But enough about E-Boys who will slowly kill us, let's talk about E-Boys who will quickly kill us with Kishibe. So Kishibe is probably the strongest straight up human in the Chainsaw Man universe. I mean, no fiend, no hybrid, just a human with a couple of devil contracts. He's a Kobeni without the panic attacks. And honestly, the length of his career as a devil hunter speaks to his power. You see, Kishibe has been hunting devils for decades. And because of that, he's slowly but surely gotten a little bit insane, espouting the belief that the strongest devil hunters are those that have lost their mind a little bit. Those not driven by hatred or revenge and just driven by a sheer want to kill devils. And that's who Kishibe is to a T. All he likes is women drinking and killing devils. In fact, earlier when I said that the angel devil was considered the second strongest member of Tokyo Special Division 4, Kishibe was considered the strongest. And the angel devil is an actual devil. So Kishibe as a regular human in the devil hunting profession has to have some contracts with devils. And he has three contracts that we know of. One with the claw devil, one with the knife devil, and one with the Needle Devil. We don't know the price of any of these contracts, but we do know that these contracts allow Kishibe to spawn these weapons out of the blue. But his contracts aren't really what makes him powerful. It's his superhuman ability. Kishibe is so strong, he was able to speed rush both Denji and Power and snap both of their necks with one hand. He was able to shatter Power's blood-hardened weapons with his bare fists. And he's able to react to and counter surprise attacks like when Power tried to stab him with a spear through a door. I mean, the man is the epitome of a veteran devil hunter. And if you're crazy enough to go into the majority of your fights against actual devils with your bare fists, well, you're probably gonna be pretty strong. But since we're talking about veteran devil hunters, next up on the list is Aki. See, I know I just stated that Kishibe is probably our strongest straight up human on this list. So then why is Aki higher than him on this list? And I'm not gonna tell you the answer to that because it is technically a spoiler, but just know I do have a reason. Denji, much like our previous entry, is a veteran devil hunter. A man who has been through the ringer and has killed more devils than he probably remembers. And with experience comes power. But here's the thing, Denji acquires his power a bit differently. Well, Denji's physical prowess is very, very impressive. Being able to keep up with the likes of Katana Man before for his future devil contract, tanking being stabbed in the ribs by Kobeni without going to the hospital afterwards, and even being able to stand in front of the darkness devil without dying. His true power comes from his devil contracts, specifically his contract with the cursed devil, the fox devil, and the future devil. He does have 
another contract, but we're not going to talk about that one. He can't even technically use it anyway, so it doesn't really even matter when we're talking about how strong he is. Aki's contract with the Cursed Devil grants him a nail-like sword. And in order to use his contract, Aki has to stab his opponent three times with this sword. Upon stabbing his opponent three times with a sword and saying fire each time, the Cursed Devil will grab that enemy and inflict a massive amount of damage to them. And usually this kills Aki's enemy, unless of course they're a hybrid. In which case, with a little blood, they can rejuvenate. Outside of needing to stab somebody three times, using this sword also significantly reduces Aki's life. Aki's other contract is his Fox Devil contract, which by simply making this form and saying cone, Aki was able to summon the Fox Devil's head, which he would use to eat opponents, but also would have to sacrifice part of his being to the Fox Devil in order to summon. Now this could be part of his liver or skin off his forearm. However, Aki can no longer use this contract because he fed the Fox Devil something she didn't like. Aki's last and arguably most important contract is the contract he has with the Future Devil. See, his contract didn't cost Aki anything because the Future Devil saw Aki's death, found it hilarious and wanted to be there for it. Aki allows the Future Devil to live within his right eye, which grants him two abilities. The first of which is Precognition. It allows him to see a couple of seconds into the future, which means Aki can know exactly where attacks are gonna be before they're even launched. The problem is this Precognition only allows him to dodge what he can humanly dodge. If you have a gun to his chest and he sees you pulling the trigger, he can try and move out of the way with a couple of seconds granted to him through Precognition, but if he can't dodge, he can't dodge. It's not infinite, it's a couple of seconds, and while he is incredibly fast, resilient, and strong, he's still a human. Aki is also able to summon the future devil, which he can use for any of the reasons you would summon any devil, really, but usually it's to talk to the future devil. On top of all of this, Aki is an incredible swords, wielding a sword given to him created by the angel devil, which he can use to hurt things that wouldn't usually be hurt by a sword, like ghosts, and allows him to keep pressure on enemies significantly stronger than him, like hybrids. Now, Aki does technically get another power up in the manga, but like I said, not gonna go into that. Just know it allows him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the strongest people in the entire universe. Coming up after Aki, we have somebody who we've already mentioned on this list in Quan Shi. See, Quan Shi is known as the first devil hunter, the hybrid of the crossbow devil hailing from China. And while she is technically an antagonist in this story, she is still very much a devil hunter. Quan Shi is a woman of insane power. She carries three swords on her and the way that she transforms into her hybrid form is by pulling an arrow in her eye. In this form, her head becomes very similar to that of Denji's in his chainsaw man form, except she has an afro of sorts of arrows and her arms become crossbows. Her strength has been described as beyond what's humanly possible. She's been shown several times to be able to cut through entire crowds of people in one slice. She was even able to block an attack that knocked out both Aki and Angel. And when it comes to reflexes, those are also incredibly superhuman, as she needs to keep her reflexes as superhuman as possible to keep up with her insane speed. But this is all just in her human form, because after entering her hybrid form, she no longer uses her blades. She focuses more on firing arrows from her arms. Now, these arrows are shot with such a velocity that they punch circular holes in her enemies. And I know what you're saying. You're saying just get close to her, but unfortunately, that doesn't work either, as she has the capability to release a cluster of arrows that works a lot like buckshot. Not to mention, as a hybrid, she's nigh immortal. As long as somebody can pull her arrow, she can come back to life with enough blood. So for being able to cut through entire crowds of people with a sword that she rarely uses, having full capability to shoot armor piercing arrows from her arms, yeah, she's gonna be pretty high on this list. But not as high as our next hybrid on this list, Reze. Reze? Reze? I'm, I'm going with Reze. It's Russian. You see, Reze is also a hybrid like Quan Shi and Denji, but she is from the Soviet Union, which still exists in the Chainsaw Man universe. And while she, just like Quan Shi, is also an antagonist, she is also technically a devil hunter from the Soviet Union. And much like Quan Shi, she's also a menace even in her human form. See, Quan Shi was trained to be a devil hunter before she was even a hybrid. The same can be said for Reze, who was trained by the Soviet Union to be an incredible killing force before she even became the hybrid of the bomb devil, which I don't know about you, sounds a bit stronger than the crossbow devil. In her human form, she has similar strength and speed to Kobeni, being able to speed blitz Denji and being able to basically cut off his hand with a singular swipe of a knife. However, by pulling a pin in her neck, she undergoes her hyper transformation. And upon undergoing this transformation, she explodes, but she doesn't always have to immediately undergo this transformation as she's able to somewhat undergo this transformation, being able to decapitate herself and have her body catch her decapitated bomb head. She can then throw this bomb bomb head at her opponent like a grenade, and once that grenade explodes, it turns into her hybrid form. However, the decapitated head is also still around and can be piloted as a remote control bomb because the decapitated body is also explosive, not to mention that her own explosions do not hurt her. Decapitating herself is much like Denji pulling his ripcord. It causes her to lose a little bit of blood, but it's really nothing she can't handle. But her durability is also crazy, as she was able to tank a full-powered kick from the Violence Fiend, who I'm 
just realizing I forgot. Probably right after Angel, but before Kishibe, I, I think that's fair. Back to Reze. The explosions she creates are not firecrackers. They're able to destroy buildings and cars and damage Denji in his hybrid form. She can also travel at high speeds using explosions generated from her hands or feet, a lot like Bakugo. And also, a lot like Bakugo, she can use the explosive force generated from these explosions to increase the power of her punches or her kicks. And also, she has the ability to use parts of her body as a remote bomb. But if she does something like pull her hand off and throw it at you, she can control when it explodes. Not to mention, she can also make her legs and arms into torpedoes, which makes her strikes and explosions much more powerful. And then obviously, on top of all of that, she is a hybrid, meaning she is nigh immortal. With a little bit of blood and somebody pulling the pin in her neck, she can come back from anything. And sue me for it, but she's perfect for Denji. Really, her only weakness is that she can't explode if she gets wet, which makes sense when you consider the fact that her entire body is explosive. And if you get things that are combustible, like matches or black powder wet, then they won't explode. After our favorite bomb girl, next up on the list at number three, we have Santa Claus. Now, if you're anime only, this is very confusing. Yes, Santa Claus exists in Chainsaw Man. However, the technicality of calling her a devil hunter is kind of a toss-up. See, it's largely presumed that Santa Claus is a woman who has a contract with the doll devil and controls multiple bodies simultaneously. However, one of those bodies does pose as a devil hunter in Germany. This is presumed because of the form we see Santa Claus take in the library dimension that Cosmos creates. And we already know that Santa Claus can control dolls all across the world, and some of those are perfect dolls that basically pass as humans, like her private doll in Germany who's a private devil hunter. Santa Claus herself, though, the main body that's referred to as Master, resides in the Soviet Union, and it's from the security of the Soviet Union that she creates dolls and perfect dolls that she uses and controls from basically half a world away. The two perfect dolls that we know of are the devil hunter in Germany and Tolka, and Tolka is a devil hunter in the Soviet Union. Now, with this doll devil contract, Santa Claus is able to make humans into dolls. Basically, if Santa Claus touches somebody, they're turned into her doll. And if that doll touches somebody else, that person is also turned into her doll. It kind of works like a contagion. And because of this, let's say Santa Claus goes to Shibuya Crossing. She could, in a matter of minutes, have hundreds, if not thousands of dolls under her control. And each and every single one of these dolls is able to create a blade out of their arm and out of their feet. However, in order to control this many people, Santa Claus has to be close by. However, this isn't the case for perfect dolls. You see, Santa Claus is able to instill human emotions back Back into these dolls. And upon instilling human emotions into these dolls, these perfect dolls can act as satellites for Santa Claus. And these satellite beings, or these perfect dolls, are able to make contracts with devils in Santa Claus's place, as they're basically humans who are able to give things up like any other human. On top of that, Santa Claus is able to transfer her consciousness into any doll, perfect or non-perfect, meaning so long as Santa Claus has at least one doll on Earth, she will never truly die. But Santa Claus doesn't only have a contract with this incredibly broken doll devil. Santa Claus also has a contract with the cursed devil. And this contract operates very similar to Aki's, but not exactly the same. See, Santa Claus has to stab somebody four times, but the cursed devil kills them. So if anything, I would say it's an upgrade to Aki. On top of that, Santa Claus has a contract with the Hell Devil, which allows Santa Claus to transfer anybody to Hell simply by naming the place they're currently in. Santa Claus is able to transport an entire office building that's holding the majority of Tokyo Special Division 4 to Hell simply by naming the name of the building. However, summoning the Hell Devil does require that she sacrifice at least one of her bodies and three of her children. But since children is kind of an abstract term when it comes to Santa Claus, it's usually just dolls. And more importantly than any of those contracts, Santa Santa Claus also has a contract with the Darkness Devil, the only known primal devil. The Darkness Devil gave Santa Claus a piece of its own flesh, and this contract with the Darkness Devil greatly boosted her abilities. Mostly, it improved her ability to make dolls. See, previously to this upgrade to the Darkness Devil, Santa Claus couldn't turn hybrids and fiends into dolls. However, after this upgrade, she can. On top of that, Santa Claus is able to share her emotions, senses, and pain with all of her devils simultaneously, making all of them almost perfect dolls instantly. On top of that, prior to this upgrade, the dolls would cease functioning if fatally wounded. However, after this upgrade, regardless of what grave injury they take, they're able to keep moving. On top of that, her speed and strength were massively increased, and if she was in darkness, she was able to heal from fatal wounds almost instantaneously, meaning there's almost no way to defeat her at night. And more than anything, she was given a devil transformation, which seems like a combination of the darkness devil and the doll devil. So while yes, is it a bit contentious to consider Santa Claus a Devil Hunter when really she was just using perfect dolls to masquerade as Devil Hunters? Maybe. But when we're talking about a person with a hive mind, consciousness is 
kind of a loose concept. So we're going with it. Talking about loose concepts, you guys want to talk about morality? Because coming in at number two, we have the head of Tokyo Special Division 4, Makima. Big time spoilers coming up here, so if you don't want spoilers, I would skip to Denji. Surprise, surprise, Denji's number one. I guess that was a spoiler as well. Makima is arguably the second or third strongest being in existence. But she is, after all, the control devil. And as the control devil, she's one of the four horsemen. The devil's so strong, they're compared to the darkness devil, a primal devil. But also, as one of the four horsemen, she's able to remember the things that Pochita has erased. Something that only the hunger, war, and gun devil, as the other three, four horsemen, are able to do. You see, Makima is feared around the world, which only gives her more power. In fact, the only country that's still trying to fight against Makima is the United States. But as the control devil, Makima has some incredibly broken abilities, in that she can control humans to enter into contracts with her. Inarguably, her strongest contract is with the Prime Minister of Japan, whose contract stated that any time Makima is killed, be it through ailment or a weapon, that ailment or fatal blow is transferred to a random citizen of Japan. Meaning, hypothetically, if Makima is shot in the head, a random citizen in Japan takes the damage for her. Because of this, the Japanese government can't fight against her, because even if they do kill her, they'd just be killing citizens of Japan. And this contract makes her effectively immortal until every single citizen of Japan dies. Meaning, she has 125 million lives. But there's no chance she dies even close to that amount of times because her strengths are insane. When Pochita fought against the Four Horsemen before he came to Earth and was bound to Denji, Makima was not only able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him barehanded, she was also able to shatter his chainsaws with her fists. The only reason that Makima had to fight against Pochita using her fists is because she couldn't use her other techniques against him, like her domination technique. Mm. See, Makima is able to control anybody she believes is inferior to her. So if Makima believes herself to be greater or stronger than you, you are immediately under her control. And if hypothetically she doesn't believe she's superior to you, after beating you in a fight, she can convince herself that she is superior to you and force you into a contract with her. The problem is once you've been forced into a contract, you forget you've been forced into a contract. And anytime you come under Makima's control, you forget anything you do while being controlled. Not only that, if you get put under her contract, she gets your abilities, and she's able to summon these abilities whenever she needs. And it doesn't matter if you die, she can still summon your abilities. But she doesn't only make contracts with humans and fiends and hybrids, Makima makes contracts with animals, rats, bugs, and she can tap into the hearing and sight of any of these rats or bugs or humans or hybrids to know exactly what's going on everywhere. She, while on Earth, can see what's going on in hell through devils she has contracts with. That's not scary enough. She also has the force. Yeah, Makima can destroy your organs by looking at you, if you're weak, that is. If she has a sacrifice and your name, she can crush you as long as she's at a high enough place. Can use a literal spirit gun like Yusuke when she creates a gun with her hand and says bang, and the force waves generated by this spirit gun are so powerful that it was able to damage the darkness devil, a primal devil, and cut people's head off with a sword that isn't able to reach them. Listen, if you're into possibly dying and being controlled, then of course, she's your number one. She is very gorgeous to me! But she is technically the antagonist of Chainsaw Man, so... I'm sorry. But speaking of Chainsaw Man, of course, at number one, our strongest ever devil hunter is Denji. He's the main character. Of course, he's going to be number one. Denji is one of four hybrids that we know about, and he is by far and away the strongest one. However, just like every other hybrid, he has basically infinite regeneration. And the reason that Denji is stronger than all of the other hybrids is his control over his hybrid form. See, one of the biggest indicators that Denji is the strongest hybrid is the fact that he's able to hybridize his entire body. While every other hybrid is able to hybridize their head and their torso, Denji is also able to grow chainsaws from his legs. On top of that, Denji's able to do more with his hybrid manifestation than anybody else. That is to say, well, obviously, Quan Shi's able to shoot arrows. That's basically all she's got. Resi's able to explode, but once again, basically all she's got. Denji can obviously make chainsaws out of his head, arms, and legs, but he can also use his chainsaws to climb walls. He can detach his chains from his chainsaws to work as kind of spider webs, lassoing people in and pulling them to him. But on top of everything, technically, Denji has infinite stamina. In Denji's battle against the Eternity Devil, he fought for three straight days. As long as Denji is constantly consuming blood, he can fight in his hybrid form forever. On top of that, his durability is nuts. He was able to take multiple explosions from the bomb hybrid, and even if he didn't have great durability, like every other hybrid, he could just regenerate. But on top of that, Denji also has a devil transformation. A transformation where he turns into the chainsaw devil. And as the chainsaw devil, he is unkillable. He is blasted into the upper atmosphere, falls from the upper atmosphere back onto the ground, 
and is completely unscathed. In this form, he is sent to hell and it's implied that he kills every devil in hell while there. And in this form, it's revealed that he has killed the antagonist of the manga 26 times. Now the real question becomes, why is the chainsaw devil so powerful? How can the chainsaw devil be stronger than the darkness devil or the war devil or the hunger devil or the control devil? Well, I made an entire another video on that speculating that Pachita is not in fact the chainsaw devil so maybe if you're looking for more chainsaw content after this video go ahead and watch that one but that's it guys all the devil hunters and chainsaw man ranked and explained did i miss anybody outside of the violence fiend tell me in the comments below and while you guys are down there please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell the violence fiend incredibly powerful fiend has to wear poisonous gas to nerf his power is all peace and love while he's wearing the gas mask when he's not wearing the gas mask things get messy his attacks are so strong that when blocked it cracks the ground that the people he's attacking are standing on he's a cool character but we don't know that much about him so i don't feel bad about missing him sorry